were part uh, of the last uh, dance. Uh, is there anything you've learned uh, from all the documentary? I learned uh, that my friend Michael Jordan, we knew he had a lot on his shoulders. I didn't know the behind the scenes of the organization. I didn't know the situation with Scotty. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know uh, that they could have come back. And that was a shame. You played uh, against Michael Jordan. You played along with uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have to ask you this. Uh, is he the greatest of all time? Yes. He was the greatest of all my time, I tell you. And I, I fought it for a long time just messing with the media because I'm friends with him. I said, this is what I'm going to say. This <laughs> is this. Um, he's like, man, they're going to kill you. And I was like, I know. But after knowing him and playing against him, definitely, he's the greatest. Uh, from your point of view, uh, why Michael Jordan was so special? What made him uh, so special? His, they showed his desire to play the game at the highest level for every minute that he plays. Mm -hmm. that, that a lot of guys take days off. A lot of guys use excuses of pain. He was, he was guaranteed to be the best you can possibly play against every night. That made him the best. If I had to ask you about your top five of all time. When I, before I was playing, uh in the pros uh i was born you know in the 60s so i i talk about the great players that i used to watch mm -hmm. uh the play the great players i play with is an entirely different different grab so it's like um you know i watch magic and bird and then i played along against magic and mm -hmm. bird but if you would ask me the people who i admired when i was growing up there would be the guys that you know they talk about but so many times, Kareem, Bill Russell, Kareem, um, uh, Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, uh, Oscar Robinson, uh, David Thompson, B Bernard King, guys that I used to watch mm -hmm. uh, before I was 22 years old and in the NBA. You faced the Bulls many, many times, uh, and you guys were like uh, Jordan's uh, kryptonite. Um, <laughs> what was the key uh, to ruin in somehow uh, his game? The key was to make sure somebody else beat you. Mm -hmm. And uh, there wasn't enough people there in that position to beat him. Uh, the, the idea was to push him left and mm -hmm. make him put two hands on the ball, just stay in between him and the basket. Mm -hmm. And if he shoots over you, that's good defense. But limit him to one shot. So if, you, if he shoots, you box him out. And everybody else play their man. But when he's going to the basket, everybody help. He's not going to pass. Have you had any special order from coach uh, Jack Daly how to stop him? If he goes left, we all come to help. Oh, He'll look and order. see all of us. Mm -hmm. And we'll all come big with your hands up. That's why <laughs> if you ever see us in the piston, everybody has their hands up. Your hands up, yeah. All right. So if he can't get to the basket, he'll either try to make a crazy shot Mm -hmm. or pass far out. So we knew that. So once we got the ball out of his hand, then everybody else had the ball, just trying not to let to get him get the ball back. What about uh, your uh, Pistons years? Have you, what have you kept the most uh, from your time in Detroit? I uh, won my first championship there <laughs> and my second championship there. So I won it when I was 25 and 26 years old. So I got to enjoy and uh, the champagne in my eyes. <laughs> I got to enjoy the, 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 for two years, got to say we were the best team in the world. Um, Great Duarte. feeling, huh? Uh, it's, it's the best to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back at uh, back in the 1991. And the, the game against the Bulls that uh, you left the floor without uh, shaking the hands. Do you remember what happened back then? Yeah, well, not all of us. Just three players did. Uh, three players walked off without shaking hands. The rest of us stayed and, shake, and shook hands. Uh, the media got that wrong since we, were, we took it all as a team. And the one that made the difference was Isaiah. Because if Isaiah would have stopped to shake Michael's hand, we wouldn't be talking about it. But the rest of the guys on the court, we went and shook. They just felt mm -hmm. um, that the superstars should have shook hands. Was it hate uh, between the Pistons and the Bulls back in time? Or just the will and the vision to win when i played in panathinaikos it's different 
than playing in Greece. I'm going to ask there's, you next. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no. So like in Greece, you know, people, you know, they get inside and they let the, the anger and the evil and the hate come out. We just competed. Mm-hmm. We, we like I give you an example. I was doing a, a, a talk show and Michael and those guys come in town. They land late. I'm doing a talk show. And I said, I'm going to go pick up Michael. <laughs> and everybody in the studio thought, OK, it's not going to happen. My brother bet everybody a hundred dollars that he'll come back with Michael. And everybody was like, I'll take that bet. <laughs> 40 minutes, I roll in with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> because outside of the court, when you're, when you're a professional basketball player, professional athlete, all the, that rivalry and hate and stuff, that's mm-hmm. with the audience. That's with the fans. That's with we wear these colors. This is our team. But on court or on field, you're competing. Not to hurt the next person, but not to let the other person beat you. Mm-hmm. But then a little bit after that, you calm down, and then we go on with our lives. Everybody expects us to be like gladiators. <laughs> and you fight till you die, and who doesn't fight goes back into the cage until the next time. We're not like that. So how was your first practice uh, with the Bulls and Michael Jordan? Well, they were surprised on how well James Edwards, who was also on that team, Dennis Rodman, who was also on that We're team. We're guys. Yeah how well we knew their offense. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, it was hard to get to learn it, but we had to practice against it so many times that we knew how to defend it uh, the best we could. And we did a really good job defending that, off- that offense. So I had an idea of the offense from the de- defensive side. I, I, it was pretty easy to me. Funny, Tex gave me, Tex Winters, who uh, created it, gave me the book. So I have the book literally with all the ideas of the triangle offense. Is it true that Michael Jordan filled your locker with uh, shoes when you joined the Bulls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said to me, he said, Sal, you wear Nike? I said, yeah. He said, what size you wear? I said, 15. He's like, yeah, all right. When I came back the next day, my locker was full of red and white size 15, <laughs> the newest Nikes. It wasn't Jordans. They were Nikes, the newest Nikes that they wanted on the court next to Michael. Mm-hmm. And I had some really, really cool sneakers. <laughs> uh, you've got four rings, uh, and you have to yeah. pick just one. Which one will be? My first one. Your first one. Yeah, I had to pick my first one. Only because uh, my whole life, I wanted to play in the NBA since I was six, I think it was, uh, 12 when I made the complete <laughs> dedication to becoming a, a professional athlete. And when you finally get to that point, now you have a new goal. And a lot of guys want to be all-stars. I want to be a champion. And so when my first year, we go to the Eastern Conference Championship against the Celtics in game seven, and we lose. And then my next year, we beat them, and we go to game seven in the championship against the Lakers, and we lose. So when we, 1989, we come back with a better record, and we sweep the Lakers in the championship, Uh, and we beat the Bulls in the Eastern Conference Final. Uh, just that, that fight from being a little boy wanting to be in the NBA to mm-hmm. winning your first championship and that feeling that you, you can only get when you win a championship. So after winning the championship with the Bulls, uh, you decided to play basketball overseas. Uh, mm-hmm. How about Nikos Athens came about? Well, I was, uh, it came to a team in France, in Champagne. It came to a team in Italy. Mm-hmm. And Panza Nikos, and the year before, they had won the European Championship with Dominique Wilkin. And they, uh, Mr. President, God rest his soul, I heard he just passed last year. Yeah. Um, he, he agreed. He agreed to the better contract than anyone else. My situation is the coach. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll know uh, that. <laughs> yeah, but, but this is funny what that coach told me. That coach told me, because he finally saw somebody, he said, if Michael Jordan played in Europe, he would only average like 16 points. <laughs> he said, Tony Kuko is better than Michael Jordan. And I looked at him and I said, he's crazy. <laughs> and a, a week later, I was out of there. It wasn't for me. Um, they wanted me to do things I didn't want. I loved the country. 
And uh, I love the fans. I liked uh, the competition back and forth. But like I said, I had guys who played on other teams. And, and, in, and people don't understand that. They don't understand that what we do is for a living. And, and we don't harbor hate. And so, uh, what is it, Glifada? Uh, I think it was where my friend lived. And it was crazy because my car had a Panathinaiko sticker on the back of it. <laughs> so <laughs> I found out I wasn't supposed to drive certain places. Um, you know, there was a lot of things that people don't know. Like in my contract, I had to fly first class. Uh, so imagine you get on a team and your contract says you got to fly first class and you go and sit in first class and the team walks by you and everybody sits in the back. It just wasn't a good feeling. They wanted me to have a curfew. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to them, I'm 32 years old with children and I, <laughs> I'm worth, you know, $30 million. You can't tell me when to go to sleep or when to go to bed. <laughs> and they didn't, they didn't understand that. And I was like, uh, no. You only have me to work. Why do I have to be home at 11 o'clock? Well, you got a game tomorrow. Well, what's that have to do with me being home at 11 o'clock? Like, what if I was in the gym to 2 o'clock? Would that make a difference? Yeah. Right? So, and then, you know, Greece, you, you, you finish eating at 11 o'clock. You go, to the club at one, you go to the club at 1 o'clock. It finishes at 6 o'clock. Right? And then they wanted me to go to morning practice. And I go, what do we do in morning practice? They go, we lift weights and we shoot. I go, I don't need you to put me in practice to do that. I do push-ups, crunches. I go in and I do my shots. I get my shots in. I don't, you know, I'm not a high school player or a college player. I'm a mm -hmm. professional player. So I'm a professional. And so to let me be a professional, you can't tell me how to be a professional. I, I just won three championships. I think I know in the highest league when it comes to basketball in the world, I played with the great, along the greatest players. I don't think I needed somebody to tell me how to be an adult. So that just didn't work for my personality. And as I remember, uh, you, you, you went back to the States uh, for your some business, uh, I yeah. think, and then you came yeah. back in the Athens just because you wanted to be on time uh, for the game. You yep. flew from uh, the airport with a helicopter to the arena. That's right. So but I was still doing didn't it. Play. Yeah. So that's that's my point to you. Like uh, they said, will you be back for the game? I said I'll be back for the game, and um, the, I literally they I landed in Greece. I mean, landed in France, and I didn't know you're supposed to get on the bus to go to the plane. So I go down. I get a I get a taxi. I go to the other side of the airport to the private airport, and I pay twenty thousand dollars to get a jet to fly from France to Greece. I land before my plane and then they had a helicopter because you know how traffic is and that mm -hmm. land. And so I get off, I get in there and my stuff is not in the locker. <laughs> and the coach had said that morning before, if he's not at the morning practice, he can't play. And that wasn't told to me because if I knew that I wouldn't have done all the stuff I needed to do. I could have stayed in America. Yeah. Right. Like there was no reason for me if I was going, if you weren't going to play me, I didn't need to be there. So I sit in the stand. Mr. President loved that I did all that. He gave me my money back. He gave me twenty thousand dollars in drachma at that time, and uh, we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> When you first uh, signed with Panathinaikos, you traveled straight to Barcelona because Panathinaikos was playing on the road. That yeah. that was your first uh, game. What do you remember? I remember I got 17 points. <laughs> <laughs> I had 17 points and guys realized I could play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember this. So we're having a team dinner and, uh, and I smoke cigars and we're having a team dinner and uh, the team is over here. Another thing I'm not used to. So remember in the NBA, everybody is separate until it's time to perform. And then when it's over, they tell you when you need to be at practice, when you need to be mm -hmm, at the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So team dinner, I didn't, you know, I didn't know whatever. The coaches are sitting over here. And so they finish eating and they all start smoking cigarettes. 
So I, I hadn't seen that before. My coaches don't smoke cigarettes. I, you know, all right. So I pull out my cigar, start smoking my cigar, and they call me and they go, come here, Coach Weston, you can't smoke in front of the players. I said, you're smoking in front of the players. Does Phil Jackson smoke in front of the players? I go, yes, we all smoke cigars on the bus, off the bus, <laughs> playing cards. Like, we're grown men. What are you talking about? So that's another thing I didn't like. I don't like the, the one thing I didn't like about playing in Europe was they don't treat them like men, like grown men. They treat them like they're in college. If President Panathinaikos, who passed away two years ago, uh, treated you very, very well. You told me that he gave you also the money. Um, yeah. What do you remember of him? What, what's your memories? I remember his wife and I had a connection in astrology. Oh, really? We, we talked about, yeah, we had. And I remember he took me to the nightclub and took me to dinner one time. I realized how short he was, and it was funny. But everybody was Mr. President, Mr. President. And he was always, and he was like, John, the coach needs you to go to practice. <laughs> Now, this was funny. It's, it's seven o'clock in the morning. We are just getting back. And he goes, You got to go to practice today. I go, it's, I got practice in three hours. I've been up with you the whole night. And <laughs> he made me go to practice. And so I went to practice. And I said, I can't hang out with you and go to the morning practice. You told me before about the rivalry between the Bulls and the Pistons. What about the yeah. rivalry between Panathinaikos and Olympiakos? I think you, you played a game yeah. against Olympiakos. Yes, we won that game. I remember it was a guy who I played against in college. And this was the craziest thing. One side was Panathinaikos and the other side was, uh, what do you call that team? Olympiacos. Um, Olympiacos. Olympiacos. And somebody shot a flare gun over the court. <laughs> and then somebody from the Panathinaikos shot a flare gun back over the court. And I was like, uh, no, no cops, no firemen, nothing. And... I remember at the end of the game, they made everybody from Pantaneco sit still and all the Limpanacos fans had to leave. And when they left, then they let them leave. They, see, that was so crazy to me. But uh, then here in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. a guy gets murdered for wearing the wrong jersey. I mean, he, he winds up getting beat down. So I understand that fans can be crazy. Greece just understood how crazy. <laughs> and uh, and I knew it was a very important game to win, so it was probably one of my best games.